There was a time when gods walked the earth, when warriors were heroes. Their battles and conquests became legend, and the legend lives on. This is the Hour of the Gladiators. Welcome to the Gladiators and the second semi-final. And the two winners tonight will go straight through to next week's grand final. But first they must test their medal against Blade, Tower and Glacier. Predator, Tornado and Storm. Taipan, Flame and of course Vulcan. Commando and Fury. and Delta, and the big bird of play, Condor. We have our champions to set the standards. We have the challengers who avert their semi-final place the hard way. And we also have our hosts, Kimberly Joseph and Mike Hammond. Hello and welcome to the semi-finals of Gladiators. It's looking a little bit like the variety club out the back there at the moment. <laughs> it sure is, Mike, because we've got two dancers and an actor waiting to come on and battle it out for a place in our final. Yeah, but just in case you think it's all getting a little bit too show busy, we also have someone who's played just about every sport under the sun and represented Australia in rugby league. Well, let's bring them on and check them out. Our first challengers are Marissa Hootner and Debbie Santi. Marissa from Canberra is a teacher who excels at gymnastics, swimming, athletics and rugby league. And Marissa earned five points both times she competed on suspension bridge. In the quarterfinal, she did well to hold Glacier at bay. Debbie is an acrobat, a tumbler, a dancer and a stunt woman. She's also the mother of young Natasha. And in her quarterfinal, Debbie was injured in Powerball, but she rallied and won herself a very gutsy six points. Please welcome Marissa and Debbie. Hi, Deb. Hi, Mike. Semi-finals. Did you think you'd make it this far? I certainly hope to make it this far, yes. I can feel the excitement there. You're like you're sort of jittering around. You're already set to get in there and attack. <laughs> Yeah, I'm always like this, but tonight, even more so. Now, I've got the uh, the game results from last time. Pyramid, that, that was a little bit disappointing. You're hoping to do better tonight? Yes, I am hoping to do better. Make it all the way to the top. That's the only goal. Well, that's a pretty good tactic to have. I mean, that's where you want to get the 10 points. How about in duel, though, too? You managed to get five points off Glacier. Now, that is no mean feat. <laughs> no, it was very good, and I was pretty excited about that. But to knock one of them off would be pretty damn good. So looking for the 10 points there. Ten points, yes. All right. Now, you're evenly matched with Marissa in terms of times on the Eliminator. How, how are you feeling about that tonight? <laughs> well, I'm hoping to get as many points as I can going into the Eliminator, and then I will be feeling more confident, but we'll see. Well, there's just that Eliminator between you and the finals. Good luck in the semi-finals tonight, Debbie. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Marissa, welcome back to the semi-finals. Now, among other sports, you've actually played rugby league for Australia. That's right, I've played for Australia. And uh, how many women play rugby league? Well, the numbers are developing. Um, in ACT, I've just started the girls' rugby league in school, so the numbers for the juniors are developing, so hopefully the seniors will develop at the same time. Now, you're actually a PE teacher, so I'm sure all the kids at school will be behind you tonight. Yeah, they all watch the show. They love it. OK, well, you're a great hero then. And um, tell me, last time we saw you, you've actually played Pyramid twice now, and you haven't managed to get to the top. Is tonight the night? Uh, well, hopefully, but it's the last game, so I might be a little bit tired by then, but I'll try. So have you got your tactics planned? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and which have been uh, your favourite games to date? Well, I think I'll enjoy the swing shot tonight, because that uh, reminds me a bit of bungee jumping, and I love that. OK, so we might see a great performance from you on swing shot tonight. Good luck, Marissa. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Debbie and Marissa. Well, we, of course, have two other semi-finalists with us, with us tonight. They're our male challengers. Please put your hands together now for Paul Reynolds and Jeff Brewitt. Paul from Sydney is a former rugby league rep. 
He's now a dancer and also studying to be an accountant. And Paul has run the gauntlet twice but has never made it through. But give him credit, he's quick and he's the eliminator record holder. Jeff from Queensland is an actor and a model. He's an ex-army unarmed combat expert and keeps fit through rock climbing. And Jeff showed us what he's made of in his quarter-final when he earned 10 points dodging and weaving through hit and run. Jeff and Paul. Welcome back, Jeff. Now, you understand this is semi-final time now. Yeah, it's where it comes down to the crunch, Kimberly. It's get, getting really hard now. It certainly is getting tough. Now, uh, you want to star in an action movie. Now that you know what it's like in front of the cameras, do you still want to uh, be a movie star? Uh, yes, Kimmy, I love being in front of the cameras. I'd like to follow uh, the footsteps of uh, Bruce Willis or Sylvester Stallone and star in a lead film would be great. Fantastic. Now, what have been your favourite games to date? The Wall. The Wall, I know, against Condor. You've beaten him twice. Yeah, and I think he's going to be after me tonight. He'll really want to knock me off my perch in Jewel. That's for sure. I was just going to say, you've got Jewel against him, so he may well be out for revenge. Good luck to you, Jeff. Thanks, Kimberly. Paul, semi-finals tonight, but you've already had the advantage of playing three of these games in your heat so far. Which ones do you think are going to perform in the best? Well, Mike, the spirit of competition is really high, and the challenge of the Gladiators is incredible, so... Uh... I think I'm going to go as hard as I can on just about all of them. Your eliminator time was a cracker, 54 seconds. Do you reckon you'd be able to get that down to under the 50-second mark? That would be amazing. Well, it depends, Mike, on, on uh, how, how tired you get through, through the show. If, uh, especially the pyramid, it, it, that really takes it out of you. If I can, uh, if I can keep fit, keep well, uh, right up until the pyramid, I should be OK, and I'm going to try and crack the 50 mark tonight. All right, Paul. We'll, we'll look forward to seeing that. Please give Paul a big round of applause and wish him all the best tonight. Both our male challengers, Paul and Jeff. Well, we have one more very important person to meet, and that is our referee, Mike Whitney. All right, here we go. Hi, Hi Mike. Hi, Mike. Kimberly. Well, welcome to the semi finals. Now, it's kind of unusual because we've got two dancers and an actor, and I don't think that really fits the gladiator build. Well, dancing to me is sort of very aerobic anyway, you know, and, and modern dancers have to be very fit, very agile, a uh, lot of flexibility and stuff like that. And modern dancing to me is sort of acrobatics to music anyway. Now, to give you some proof, both the dancers we have on the show tonight have beaten the record in Eliminator. And let me say, Mike, that's no shoff shoe shuffle, mate. I'll give you the tip. <laughs> no shoff shoe shuffle. That's it. <laughs> 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 well, let's not two-step around this one anymore. Without any further ado, let the games begin. Well, our male challengers have played this one before. But for the women, it's a whole new ball game. Three points for a red ball, two for a blue and one for a white, only if you get them back in your basket. Both new to swing shot, let's welcome our female challengers, Debbie. And Marissa. Up against our gladiators, Fury. And Blade. And here's Mike Whitney to start the game. Challengers! Are you ready? Well, as Kimberly ready? says, neither semi-finalist just try and swing shot. Hey, it looks spectacular, hey, but it's so hey. hard to grab a ball when there's two gladiators coming after you. And Marissa, the woman in red, bounces, knocks two white balls off, and Debbie grabs a blow on her first swing. Well done. Two points to Debbie. Marissa down with a bounce. Did she get a blue ball? I think she did. Well done. Debbie couldn't get anything that time round, and with 40 seconds left on the clock, the scores are level. Marissa takes the chance, grabs a white ball on that leap. Well done, Marissa. Here comes Debbie, and Fury absolutely foils Debbie. Marissa takes another leap. Blade missed times again, and Marissa can't grab a red. She spilled a red and a blue ball. She goes away empty-handed. Marissa with another bounce. This time, Blade's on target, and Marissa was denied any opportunity. Debbie, oh, Debbie faints, she held back, Fury went on her own. Can Debbie grab a three? No, she can't. Debbie's now in the thick of things with Marissa, they're tangled up. The clock's about to run out. There's the whistle, a good game. 
Debbie, I like your technique there. You kind of bluffed and tricked Fury a couple of times. Yeah, I did. The one that it really counted when I tricked her, I needed to get those three points, but Marissa was in my way, so I missed it. But that pole was just slightly too far away for you sometimes, wasn't it? I tried to jump as far as I could, but... Well, the good thing is you managed to get one blue ball, which is two points. Well done. Marissa, that was a fine effort, I must say. Oh, it's a really great game to play. It's so enjoyable. But you couldn't quite get up to those red balls, which you wanted desperately. Well, I nearly reached them once, but she came across and pushed me out of the way, so she did really well. Well, a great start to the night. Blade, you had a bit of trouble there at the beginning. Uh, she tried to fool me there, so I just let her have that one. Otherwise, I'd have lost all of them. Okay, and then you were in for the tackle. Then I got the timing, yeah. Okay, well done. I think Debbie did quite well in bluffing her way through that. She did. The cheeky thing got me right on the last one. <laughs> Smart tactics from the challengers. Marissa has three. Debbie has two points. Let's welcome back now for this semi-final round of swing shot. Jeff. In the blue, it's Paul. And our gladiators, Taipan. And Commando. Well, let's set these guys flying. Here's Mike Whitney. Challengers, are you ready? Jeff scored eight points last time he swung, Gladiators, and Paul got three. Are you ready? Timing is everything, as we saw three, in the women's game. Two, one. The whistle blows, and the big men fly for the start of the game. And Jeff grabs a red. That's three. Paul got a blue. That's two. What a great start to swing shot. Down they come again. Jeff's got another blue ball. Fantastic. 4-3 is the score. As they set themselves once more, Taipan spoiled Jeff that time by pushing away the pole. Interesting tactics. Paul came down, couldn't really grab anything that time, didn't have the momentum going. Jeff tried to grab a white ball, don't think he did. Paul also missed out that time round, so it's still 4-3 with just over 20 seconds to go. Taipan spoiling very well, but Jeff hasn't got his timing right. Neither is Paul, actually, as he bounces straight back into action. Down he goes and grabs a blue and a white. And Commando doesn't want him to have them. And the mid-air argy-bargy on the bungee. Now, Commando's not allowed to wrestle the challenger like that after he's left the pole. There's the whistle. We'll get a ruling on that one shortly, but let's have a look at the replay. What a great bounce there by Jeff. Got three, and Paul bounced up to get two. But how's this one? Two balls in one. Hard-hitting round of swing shot there. Guys, you both uh, scored points on the first jump. A great effort there, Jeff. How are you feeling now? I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty tired, Mike. Um, I was a long way from the pole. It must have been swinging or something. I just couldn't get close at all. Yeah. I mean, uh, Taipan, full credit to him, blocking you at every chance he could. That's his job. He did very well, Mike. He was after me this time, and full credit to him. You got three points, though. Great effort. So there's three points that will all go into uh, helping you out by the time we get to the eliminator. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Now, Paul. Uh, We've got four points there that I saw, two blue balls in. We've got our referee, Mike Whitney, in because I saw you uh, nod to the refs uh, just at the end of the game there. Yes, that's right, Mike. Uh, Commander was all over me like a monkey, but uh, I think he just held on a little bit too long there. The rules do state that you can't hang on to the competitor. That's what I'm going to protest against. OK, well, these guys, obviously, by semi-final stage, Mike, know the rules very well. Our referee's here to give a decision. Paul's quite right in what he's saying. The gladiator can hit the ball out of the challenger's hands or grab it and pull it out of the challenger's hands. We've ruled that Commando grabbed Paul by the arm and then took the two balls off him. So he gets those points. So, so that's a total of? It's a total of seven points. Seven points, a great round. Well done, Paul. The referee bounces Commando and Paul takes a four-point lead after game one. At this early stage of our game, we still have Whiplash and Pyramid to come. But first, our challengers go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Gladiators. In Duel, up next.
Hi, I'm Marissa. And I'm Debbie. We've been through the mill. But we're still standing. Final's just the other side of the Eliminator. And we're not giving up now. For this game, we've got our challengers high in the air once again with their feet on something solid. At least until the whistle blows. Ten points if you stay up there for the full 30 seconds and don't get knocked down by the Gladiator. Our first challenger up there in the red is Marissa. And her Gladiator is Flame. Let's start the battle. Here's Mike Whitney. Challenger! Are you ready? Marissa has played ready? rugby league and rugby union, ready? but she's never played against ready? Flame in Jewel. Three, two, one. Marissa standing at the rear of her platform, fending Flame off. Now Marissa starting to fight hard, but Flame is connecting with her blows. Marissa's just swinging and hitting Flame's pugil stick. This is a tough game of Jewel as Flame delivers a haymaker. Great recovery by Marissa. Both women's pugil sticks locked in defence. Flame trying everything to unsettle Marissa, but she can't. Flame so much more accurate. Marissa's just copying it sweet. Where's the whistle? There it is, five points. Was Marissa lucky or plucky? Anyway, she somehow survived and took it hard until the last minute rally that made Flame a little bit twitchy. Three, four, five times. We thought you were gone, but no, you managed to stay up for five points. Well done. Thanks, I thought I was gone a few times there. I've been up against Flame before, and it's a hard duel. Actually, you got Flame a good one around the legs there. We thought she was gone for a minute. Yeah, I was trying a different tactic, because she was going for the head, and I had my stick too low, so I thought, oh, well, may as well go for the legs. <laughs> well, you must have had some good tactics lined up, Flame. These challenges are just getting better and better, aren't they? Yeah, it's Kimberly. It really doesn't matter how much practice we get up there on that dual podium. It's still not getting much easier. Marissa stayed up there for five points. Now let's see if our next challenger can go one better. Let's welcome Debbie. Up against our gladiator, Electra. Debbie has dueled Glacier before and survived for five. Tonight, she's got a different gladiator. It's Electra who's driving Debbie onto the back foot with a fast and furious start. Debbie's so strong in the arms, she's a tumbler and an acrobat. She's got the right attitude also as she fights hard and knocks Electra off. Ten points to Debbie. First time for Electra on Jewel. She started off well, but Electra came on too strong in the end, and the Queensland tumbler tumbled the gladiator right off her perch. Debbie, you're starting to feel a little bit more confident now. Um, yes, I am, Mike, actually. My size isn't mattering too much to me. There's a lot of skill involved in the games, and I think you're showing that the skill is really what gets you through in the end. <laughs> yes, it is. Skill and lots of balance. <laughs> Absolutely, and that game balance is a, is a big part of it. It's not just the strength and the hits, but you've done fantastically there. Ten points. Thank you, Mike. Debbie does duel very well, in fact. And now she surges to a great lead of four points after two games. Last time, he took a thrashing against Vulcan. So let's welcome Jeff. This time, he's up against our gladiator, Hammer. Over to you, Mike Whitney. Challenger, are you ready? A thrashing is right, Kimberly. Vulcan got Jeff ready? dancing on one foot and set him spinning. Will Jeff bounce better tonight? Jeff's on the defensive, ducking and fending straight from the start. Trying to keep his balance this time. Hammer's just jabbing away. Jeff's family want him to do something. He's trying, guys. Well, he's unbalanced. No points. Jeff's just a slipping and a sliding on top of the platform. The feet went everywhere and then onto Hammer's turf. Hammer gave him a warning blow across the bows. The unarmed combat man lost this one. Jeff, you're not allowed to swear on TV, but I think I know how you're feeling. Yeah, Mike, uh... It was pretty close, so I was really looking forward to uh, getting the 10 points there. Bottom line is, mate, you stepped across onto uh, on a Hammers platform, instant disqualification, no points for you there. Yeah, it's a bit of bad luck. And now to another challenger who's been to the Vulcan School of Duel and failed. Paul. And a gladiator Vulcan. 
Vulcan Paul flying in the quarterfinals. And the master blaster is the only description for Vulcan. He's blitzing Paul up there. I reckon Vulcan's hit Paul about 20 times in 10 seconds. Paul unbalanced himself to the Vulcan's platform. 114 kilos behind each blow here from Vulcan as he ducks. And then Paul came forward, unbalanced himself, and it was all over. No points as he rides Vulcan's stick to the ground. Paul. I could see you limbering up beforehand, but it didn't seem to work. This was a rematch between you and Vulcan, and uh, he got you again. Well, I'll tell you what, Kimberly, I, I had him... Last time I had him, he had some good hits, and I thought, well, this time I'll try a bit more strategy, but he's just too strong. He's had, he got me on about three big ones, and I thought, so, I saw stars, but uh, I thought I could regain. And I took that little step forward, not meaning to, but uh, that's an instant dis dis disqualification. I g gave up from there. Well, unfortunately, balance is everything in this game, and Vulcan knows all about that, undoubtedly. Well, Kimberly, I just want to thank all my fans out there. I know they're getting sick of this because I'm always winning. Okay, thank you to the fans. Paul and Jeff's in packing by the Gladiators. No joy on Jewel, and Paul still has a four point lead, two games in. The challengers want to move them. Problem is, the Gladiators just don't want to go. Something's got to give. Coming up next, it's Whiplash. Howdy folks, I'm Paul. And I'm Jeff. The heats and quarters were really tough, but they were just the warm-up. Tonight, the real test begins. Two challenges enter, but only one lead. It's a delicate blend of balance and brute force. Yes. Drag the gladiator out of the circle and win yourself 10 points. Our first challenger up on Whiplash is Marissa. She'll be facing our gladiator, Glacia. Here's Mike Whitney to start the game. Challenger, are you ready? Gladiator, are you ready? Well, Marissa hasn't played Whiplash before, but Glacia has. 
Marissa spinning Glacier in a circle, trying to unbalance her. But Glacier is locked in. Look at the power in Glacier's arm as she jerks the boat out of Marissa's hand. No points. Marissa, it's obviously the end of the game when the dog bone comes out of your hand. Yeah, it just seemed to slip out of my hand. I didn't really have any control over it. But of course, uh, they are the rules. You are strapped in as well, but the strap is only there to help help you with the, uh, the loose grip. That's right. You didn't throw it. <laughs> you obviously wanted to get her off that floor, but I mean, trying to move Glacier is like an immovable force, really, isn't it? That's right, particularly when she sunk the Titanic. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Glacier, full points to you. A good round. Yeah, thanks. Like it is, Glacier's big and tall, and she's cool, and she couldn't move me out, but all the credit, she tried hard. So now to our next challenger, who hopes that her grip can last. Let's welcome Debbie. Against our gladiator, Flame. And Debbie doesn't want to lose her grip in this game. But look at the size difference. 50 kilos of acrobat up against 70 kilos of gladiator. And Debbie tries to push Flame backwards. That doesn't work. Debbie trying to put Flame into a defensive stance. That's not working. Debbie's trying to get Flame off balance. And that's not working either. Her family is not convinced yet. Flame is the whip. Debbie is the lash. Flame's elbow hasn't left her hip, and Debbie's trying a last-minute reversal. She runs at Flame, she's pulling her, she's staggering backwards, but the whistle blows no points. Debbie, you never gave up. Right to the end, you were fighting there. What a hard game for your challenges. Very hard, very hard. Flame's so big, she's so hard to budge. I know exactly how heavy are you now, Flame? I'm only a mere 70 kilos. Compared to? 50. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. 20 kilos difference. Well, no wonder. A great effort. Flame, you just look so statuesque there. I notice you don't even move your elbow, do you? Well, thanks, Kimberly. It may look easy, but it's not an easy game because the challenger can try to get you off balance and move you any direction that she wants to. I actually thought she was going to jump on top of me at one stage, <laughs> but she did well to, to stay there with me. Both women whipped in game number three, and the scores remain the same. Debbie 12, Marissa 8, with one game to go. The guys are just as desperate in this round to gain some points. Our first male challenger is an expert in unarmed combat. Let's welcome Jeff. And our gladiator for this round is Condor. This will be a good match. Let's go to Mike Whitney. Challenger! Are you ready? Strength, balance, weight, tactics. Are you ready? It's a fantastic yeah, game, Whiplash. And these guys are the semi-finalists. Have they got the right stuff? Jeff tries to catch Condor off guard, but the gladiator just digs in. Jeff stretching Condor's arm and patience as Condor whips him back. Jeff has got Condor moving quite a lot, and that's dangerous for the gladiator as Jeff switches directions trying to catch Condor napping. He can't, and the family of the semi-finals here are supportive tonight. Jeff dragging Condor to the brink, but Condor now countering. Jeff twisting and turning, and he's about to run out of time. There it is, no points. Jeff, did you ever have to do anything like that in unarmed combat? Oh, a little bit of stuff like that, Kimberly. It's very hard. It sure is hard, especially when you're trying to pull a condor out of the circle. He's a very big man and he's got the technique down pat. He sure has. Condor, it's a, a fine line there, isn't it? I mean, you guys have got to make sure you've got the grip on the carpet as well as on the dog bone. Not easy. It's not an easy game, but uh, it's all in technique and a bit of strength. Last time he played Whiplash, he lost his grip. It's Paul. Coming face to face with the Lord Vulcan. Lord Vulcan? Well, he'd have you believe that. He tries to lord it over the challengers whenever he wins. Paul dancing all around the ring, moving quickly, hoping no doubt to get Vulcan wrong-footed. But Paul falls, his foot tangled with Vulcan. He shoes off and sews his grip. Well, Vulcan stepped onto Paul's right shoe, and a moment later he lost it and the bone. Mike Whitney now watching the replay. Will he give Paul another chance? The game will continue. 21 seconds on the clock. Three, two, one. 
So Paul gets a reprieve and straight away Paul tries to off balance the gladiator. But Vulcan just whipping Paul back big time. Paul switches direction now and Vulcan's ready for him. He's hardly moving. Vulcan just snapped the challenger right and left. Oh boy, Vulcan has got some power in those arms. Paul going backwards and forwards and Vulcan's going nowhere. Neither is Paul. And that is all, Paul. Paul, you wanted those points. I did need those points, Mike. I had him about a step close, but they call it a dog bone. I didn't know I was going to be able against a big dinosaur. <laughs> Vulcan, shoe came off, but I know that in that break while the uh, referee was looking at the replay, you thought the game was up. He'd let go and you'd won. Well, Hammond, I won again. What can I say? Story of my life. Gladiators, the winners in Whiplash, and the score hasn't changed in the last two games. Paul's still four points in front. OK, we've got Pyramid coming up next, but Mike Whitney, how tough is this game really? Well, this is a very tough game, Mike. It's very spectacular, particularly with the high tackles. And, you know, these steps are very big, but they're also very soft, so it's very hard to get off your mark. And once you've been up and down there a few times, there's not a lot of petrol Absolutely. left in the tank to make a run, and that's considering uh, if you get the chance. Yeah. That's right. Well, we're about to find out if any of our challengers have what it takes to make it in Pyramid. Up next. Winners of the semi-final will receive a fabulous five-night holiday for two at the luxurious Shangri-La Bali Dynasty Resort. Enjoy old-world tradition and first-class luxury in the one tranquil setting. A five-star lifestyle set in an Asian garden paradise. The Shangri-La Bali Dynasty Resort. Runners-up receive a Sanyo 68cm stereo colour TV a three-disc mini hi-fi system, a forehead sports review hi-fi VCR, and a cordless telephone with answering machine, all valued at $4,200. Sanyo, that's life. It's time for one last effort, and the final chance to put some points on the board before Eliminator. 60 seconds to get to the top, the first to hit the button gets 10 points. Let's welcome the girls back in the red. It's Marissa. And the blue, Debbie. And for this game, our gladiators, Delta and Glacier. Here's Mike Whitney. Challengers, are you ready? Marissa has tried twice before to climb to the top of the pyramid. Are you ready? No luck. And last time, Three, Glacier didn't let her two, get far. One. Ten points would make a big difference here to the Eliminator start. Can someone do it? As Debbie's dogged by Glacier again, as she's hanging back to avoid contact, Marissa's thrown off by Delta. Debbie using the same tactics we saw last time. Just running left and right, trying to outpace Glacier. Debbie's quick, she's made a run, but Glacier covered her nicely. Delta's covering Marissa. She's about to tackle her, and she does now. She takes her down. Glacier's finally got her hands on Debbie. She pushed her away. Marissa now makes a move. Delta dives on her. A little push, and she goes all the way down once more. Glacier's just watching. She pounces now, and Marissa's up and running. Glacier finding Debbie hard to budge, despite the size difference. 
the gladiators are almost tangled there as Delta takes off after Marissa and dives on her. Down they go. Glacier's finally got a good grip on the elusive Demi and they both come down quite hard. Demi's undaunted, Marissa's on her feet and there's the whistle, no points. A couple of big tumbles there with Glacier. Yeah, they were, they were great. Now, Glacier, at one stage I saw you there, I could see the white of your mouth guard with a big smile on your face. What if you just said, come on, come on? She was saying the same. It was fantastic. It was really quite friendly out there. And we were both laughing the whole time. That's what it's all about. Neither Debbie nor Marissa made any progress on the pyramid. And that means Debbie has a two second start going into the eliminator. For their first time on pyramid, let's welcome challengers Jeff and Paul. Up against the kings of the mountain, Condor and Hammer. Over to you, Mike Whitney. Challengers, are you ready? This is a hard game ready to take on before the eliminator. Are you ready? It's so physical, but Three, we've seen challengers take two, 10 points, and one. that's a great incentive for both these guys on the last game. Hammer's so keen, he almost trips in his haste to meet up with Paul. Paul choosing to run, and Condor now nabs Jeff. Condor and Jeff wrestle and Paul is still on the move from Hammer. He's trying to outfox Hammer and not let the big gladiator grab him. Condor shadowing Jeff's every move and Paul's still on the loose. Paul is determined to dodge Hammer and Jeff can't get away from Condor. As Jeff takes off and threads his way nicely past Hammer and Paul, he used them as a diversion. Condor collects him up and Hammer hasn't come to grips with Paul as yet. Paul's leading him in a merry dance. Hammer's got him now. Jeff from the bottom looks up, figures he's got time for one big run as Hammer brings Paul all the way down to the bottom. A great tackle and Condor working over on Jeff. Both challengers running out of time, but they're going to give it one final burst, I reckon. Hammer goes, and so does the whistle. No points. Paul, first time on Pyramid. Tell me how it was, please. Doesn't look too good from here. It's very exciting. It's very exhausting. And I'll tell you one thing, you've got to keep your eye on those glads, because if they come down at you, it's like a torpedo. I think you were trying to avoid hammer at all costs then. I had my eye on him like an eagle. I just didn't want to get hit real hard. I could tell somehow. Lucky you didn't. You took a, a bit of a flying tackle there right at the end. Yeah, I know, I just ducked in time. <laughs> OK, well, unfortunately, neither of you made it to the top. No points. Jeff, you look absolutely exhausted. That's a very hard event. I've done a lot of uh, training for this, but uh, it's very tough. Hard on those legs, hey? It is. Uh, Condor just had me pinned. He's just taking it easy and just waiting to pounce. OK, well, the Gladiators do a fine job at this, and I think it's one of their favourite games. Hammer, it was like cat and mouse up there. Well, I, I knew straight away what Paul's strategy was. Um, I mean, he wanted to avoid me at all costs. And the last couple of games that I've played, I've, I've probably led up a little bit too much, so I had to back off him because it's semi-final time. We can't give either one a little head start because the Eliminator is a tough event, and it's good to see them on equal spreading. And, uh, but Paul, I mean, he's one of the quickest I've ever had on the, uh, on the pyramid, I must admit. I was. Well, I can tell you're a bit out of breath. I'm tired, yeah. OK. Condor, you did a great job at keeping Jeff from the top. Yeah, just very good, and I had to do a similar type of plan. I wish, just wish both boys the best of luck because they're good challenges. Both men denied a climb to the top, and the score hasn't changed since game number one. Paul has a two-second lead in the Eliminator. We've got two record breakers running tonight, two record breakers and one heartbreaker. That's right, it's the Travelator, and it's cranked up to semi-final speed. Crank her up. Up next Let's go. in the Eliminator.
Our grand final winners will each receive the new Hyundai Lantra GLS. Designed to perform, the Lantra has the explosive power of a 1.8-litre engine, the safety of ABS brakes, plus the comfort of power windows, central locking and power steering. The Lantra GLS is valued at over $26,000. Wouldn't you rather have a Lantra? Runners up in the series final will win a five day holiday for two at the Shangri La Fijian Resort. For the time of your life in the water and on the beaches, the place to be is Fiji. Our challenges are about one minute away from the final or failure. The Eliminator. The Eliminator decides who goes into the grand final and who goes home. Let's flash back to the quarterfinals. Marissa blissed her arrival there as she powered home to run the Eliminator in a great time of 103. And Debbie was behind until the Travelator eliminated the other challenger. Debbie passed her and came home in 105. Well, Debbie and Marissa, the pressure is on. This is semi-final time. Has it been harder than you expected? It certainly has been, Kimberly. It's been very hard. And you've pushed yourself to the limits? Pushed and pushed. <laughs> I think you're still exhausted from Pyramid, aren't you? <laughs> I am, I am. Debbie, you've got a two second start on Marissa, but Marissa, your eliminator time is actually two seconds faster than Debbie's, so uh, this should be an incredible race. Yeah, it should be. Uh, literally, we should come through the paper together. Are there uh, any areas that you're worried about in the eliminator? You've done it twice before. Oh, uh, there's always a worry. You never know what's gonna happen. I guess the travel aid is probably the biggest one. Oh, yeah, but we try to get up it. Okay, well, do you think either of you are going to break the 60 seconds? Well, if anyone can, we can, because we're the two fastest in the semi final, so we don't, no one else will. Okay, well, I think I'll agree with that. Ladies, I'll see you at the other end. Debbie, you've got the two second start. Good luck. Mike Whitney, it's over to you. Debbie? You will go on my whistle. So Marissa, fast, both these women. So go. fit and so well matched. Challenges. Both are women with two wins behind them, Three, and both hearts two, are now racing. One. Debbie doing everything right through the hurdle so far. Marissa has her in her sights, and she's doing a carbon copy of Debbie's start. The acrobat takes to the rope, and Marissa, the teacher from Canberra, has made up some time. Debbie can't afford to falter on the hand ladder. But look at Marissa, three to time. This is a semi-final fantastic effort. The 33-year-old woman in red has made up the two seconds and she's hit the lead. While the 26-year-old acrobat Debbie is fumbling on the net. What a drama unfolding right here. Marissa has turned this climb into a work of art. She's hit the zip line and look at the clock. So far it's an all-time woman's record. Debbie flying down the line, Marissa's off the mat and onto the balance beam. She's looking perfect on the beam as she comes off, steadies herself, looks up at victory and glory. This is the hardest run of the night and she's conquered it in 101. What a great time. That is a new record. Here's Debbie, her family saying go, go, go and that's what she's going to do. She's going, going. Yep, she's going through the paper first, but unfortunately for her in second place, these are champions, folks. Marissa, come on over here. What an eliminator. Let me tell you, that was true semi-final form. Well done. Thank you, I didn't think I was going to make it. <laughs> well, you did, and you got up that travelator the first time, Lucky. In fact, both of you did. What great challenges you both are. Fantastic, Debbie, well done. Now, Marissa, you made it through in a time of 101. Are you happy with that? Interested. Well, the good news is, Marissa's going through to our final. But unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to Debbie. She got you on the cargo net. She did, Kimberly. I'm exhausted. You can go home and have a big rest now, but it's been great, hasn't it? It has. It has been wonderful. If anybody gets a chance to try it, do it. It's a lot of fun. And you've been such a bubbly challenger. It's been lovely having both of you on board. Marissa, congratulations, through to our final. Let's hear it for Marissa and Debbie, both great challenges. Jeff has done the Eliminator in 104, but with a 10 second start last time, he hasn't really been pushed yet. And Paul's quarterfinal Eliminator time was 53 seconds. Will tonight's semi-final fever see him do better? A fantastic run there in the female Eliminator. The guys, I don't think are going to disappoint us. Semi-final time. Jeff, how are you feeling about this one? Um, 
I felt pretty nervous, Mike, but I'll turn that into some sort of energy. Yeah, get the adrenaline happening. Now, we were having a chat just before uh, the girls were finishing there that Paul has actually run a time about 10 seconds better than your best time, but there is a reason for that. Yeah, um, he's pretty quick on the eliminator, Mike, um, but um, I've had 10 seconds start on a couple of the contestants, and um, starting from behind this time is going to be a lot different. Yep, you are two seconds behind, and you've got a real challenge who's going to push you tonight, so uh, good luck with that. Thanks, Mike. Now, Paul, we were talking at the beginning of the show. You have run a 54-second eliminator. That is incredible. We never really thought 53 seconds. You're right. So that is incredible. For a while there, we didn't think the minute mark was going to be broken. Do you think tonight the 50-second mark could be broken? Well, Mike, I've got a big heart, and I'm going to use every bit of it tonight, although Jeff is a tough contestant. I think he's got a bit in reserve there, and I think he's going to prove it tonight. So... We'll put it to the test. All right, well, so far it's been Challenger versus Gladiator. Now it's Challenger versus Challenger. Sudden death here in the semi-finals. Jeff and Paul, good luck. Let's go to our referee, Mike Whitney. Paul, you will go on my whistle. Jeff, you will go on John. These fellas are go the cream of the challenges. The adrenaline must Three, be coursing through two, both big hearts. As Paul takes off to go through the hurdles, he hardly touches the hurdles. He's going through like a guided missile. Jeff, the man with the pacemaker ahead of him, has to use that as a psychological advantage. Can he, or will Paul's lead psych him out? Paul with a gymnastic background, Jeff the rock climber, both have been built for the handbike and the nets. As Jeff goes across the rolling logs, nearly loses a fair, but he's onto the cargo net now, and Paul is absolutely flying. The man from New South Wales in blue takes the zip line in his stride. And Queenslander Jeff, he's starting his way towards the zip line right now. Look at Paul go, the dancer is treading the board with style. And not a moment's hesitation up the travel line of 50, 51, 52.1. Oh boy, another record broken here in the Eliminator. Jeff off the beam, steadies himself up the travel line that couldn't make it the first time round. The family want him to come home and finish it off. So do we. Jeff's just got to get his win back. John Forsyth telling him to take deep breaths and set his mind on the run. Jeff's ready. We're ready. Everybody's ready for Jeff to do this. And he hasn't let us down. Well done, Jeff. But great stuff, Paul. Here's Mike. Jeff, come in here, mate. Semi-final time, as we said at the start, it's sudden death. We say goodbye to you here. But I think a big round of applause for Jeff, a fantastic effort. One minute 21, not the best time, but you gave your all. Uh, yes, Mike. That's the first time I slipped on the travel ladder. But um, that's what happens in this sort of event. Full credit to Paul. He's a good athlete, he's very quick. Absolutely. Jeff, thanks very much for being with us, mate. A, a, a great effort right throughout the series. We say goodbye to you here. Paul, this means, of course, you're into our final. But the thing I've got to tell you now, we were chatting about your time before. You just came through and smashed the record again. 52 seconds. Well done, Paul. That's a fantastic effort. And you got enough left in you to do a back somersault. That's unbelievable. Well, thanks, Mike. I'll tell you what, it was hard on knowing I got a, a quick competitor on my tail, but I don't know what happened. I just gave it everything I had. Mate, that travel later, you just ran straight up and it was running at semi final speed. Oh, it's such an exciting feeling the crowd, the atmosphere, everything here. It's just great. Folks, I think a big round of applause is in order for Paul. A fantastic effort there, mate. A big heart and a big nose. <laughs> well, it's semi-final sudden death. It's goodbye to Debbie and Jeff tonight. But Marissa and Paul have smiles from ear to ear because they're into our final. And we'll see you for that next week here on Gladiators. Goodbye. Goodbye. To join the fan club, all you have to do is send a $25 check or money order to this address. These challenges are the best. These are the championship games. And next week, join us when we demand the ultimate effort from the last four athletes who have fought their way to the top. Because next week is the Gladiator Grand Finals.